Good morning and welcome to our time of worship here at Clark Summit United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor John and it is a privilege to be with you in worship this morning. Whether you're gathered with me here in the sanctuary or you're joining us via our live stream, we are invited into this time of worship by a God who loves us, who invites us into his presence and to experience his love and grace. And so no matter what we have experienced this week, we are invited to enter into God's presence for this time of worship as God's beloved, chosen, and called children. So let us worship. Would you stand for our call to worship? Let us open ourselves continually to God's presence. Let us seek the strength that God alone provides. Who can separate us from the love of God? Will hardship, distress, or peril overcome us? Let us join together for our opening prayer. Meet us here, holy God, to search our hearts and strengthen our spirits. Plant your word among us, that it may spring up in nurturing, inviting ways for the sake of all your creatures. May we find in these moments of worship the assurance we need to live triumphantly in the face of loss, discouragement, and suffering. Lead us by the teaching and example of Jesus Christ to trust you and your will. We believe that whatever happens, you can bring some good from it. Show us, O oh God, the good you intend. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 363, And Can It Be That I Should Gain? Remember, please, that we are not singing.
Please be seated. The first scripture reading comes from the Psalm 105, verses 1 through 11. O give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among his peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are, all, are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with, with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. For our time with the children and those who are young at heart, I want to start with a question. Have you ever gotten separated from your parents? Maybe you were at the grocery store or at another store shopping and you somehow got separated from your parents. I can remember as a child on one particular occasion at the grocery store, I got distracted by something that was there on the shelf. And when I looked up, my parents weren't in front of me in the aisle or behind. I, I didn't see them anywhere. Our scripture this morning talks about being separated, separated and being lost in a way. And what it reminds us of is that even though we may get lost, maybe we get separated from our parents in the grocery store or when we're shopping, but we're reminded that we are never separated from God. Nothing in our lives, nothing can separate us from God, not a pandemic, not illness, not fear, not loneliness, nothing can separate us from God. Now you may be wondering if I got reconnected uh, with my parents. I came out to the end of the aisle at the grocery store, looked around, still didn't see them, and I made the corner into the next aisle, and there they were, and I was reunited with my parents. But more importantly, we are reminded today that nothing can separate us from God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for your love for each of us, your children. We give you thanks that nothing we do or don't do, that no place or location can separate us from you, O oh God. For your love is beyond our comprehension, beyond what we can understand, but yet you love us intimately and each of us. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you have called us as your children. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite us into our time of prayer this morning. If you have a prayer request that you would like to lift up, I would invite you to fill out one of the prayer request cards that are on the table at the back where you came into the sanctuary. Or you can also reach out to a member of the prayer team or call into the church office to let us know of a prayer request. Uh, you'll see there are requests lifted up in the messenger for this morning. Uh, two new additions. We want to continue to be in prayer for Bob Jackson and also for Doris Perry. You also see others listed on our prayer list. If you have an update on any of them, uh, please, please reach out and let us know so we can keep that as up to date as we can. Let us turn to God in prayer this morning. Most holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of your creation, and for the opportunity to gather to worship you. Whether we gather here in this place or whether we gather virtually in our homes, we know, O oh God, that your presence fills each of the places where we gather this morning. As we come before you, O oh God, we also recognize that there is much brokenness and pain in our world. 
We pray, O oh God, that your presence, your power might be among us in a real and powerful way this day. We pray for those whom we have lifted up before you this morning, those on our prayer lists and those that we name only in our hearts, O oh God. You know what the needs are for each of these, your children, O oh God, and so we pray that you might move in their life. For those who are ill, who are hospitalized, who are recuperating at home, we pray, O oh God, that your hand of healing and of comfort might be upon each of these. For those who grieve this day, O oh God, may your presence surround them and bring them hope, even in a time of loss. We pray for those who will continue to be on the front lines of the COVID-19 virus. We pray for medical professionals, for those whose employment requires them to be at risk. We pray, O oh God, that you would watch over each of these. We pray for our nation and our world as we see much violence, much division. We pray, O oh God, that your unity might overspread our nation and our world. And so we turn to you, O oh God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. We know that you are present with us in each moment, and so we seek to follow in the footsteps of Jesus as his disciples and as your beloved children, O oh God. We ask this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, 
who is against us, he who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A powerful force in our lives is that of separation. Every choice we make means that we are separated from another choice. We can't do everything, so we have to choose. Choose things to take on and things to exclude. We have to leave behind during different times in our lives. Even in the most natural things, growing up, moving from childhood to adulthood, we must leave behind what is childish. We also can't move into adulthood and older adulthood without leaving some things behind. We are separated from certain decisions and choices and experiences. We all experience this in different ways, but a profound way for many of us to experience this is with our children. Our children live with us, they grow up, we nurture them, but ultimately we know that we will be separated from them. They will go out and create their own household. They will step out on their own. It seems like many of our human experiences involve separation. We maintain separation through social distancing right now. But Paul invites us not into separation, but into unity with God here. The power of separation is no more. Paul says powerfully here, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? Paul first says here, hardship. If you've read this passage before, you can easily skip over hardship in this extensive list that Paul has for us. But life is hard. The hardship of life is a reality as our world has been upended by COVID-19. Many in our midst, in our community, are experiencing hardship in the form of unemployment, in trying to balance working from home and raising children, in balancing Is it safe to return to schools or not? In trying to navigate all of the virtual meetings, in social isolation and loneliness, in health hardships, the list goes on and on and on. Paul continues with distress. Now, distress is a force of separation in our lives. We want to finish something, we want to complete the task, but We fall short, and we're distressed because we can't complete it. We do all we can, and yet it still doesn't seem enough, and we're distressed. Distress can easily overwhelm and paralyze us. Next, Paul speaks of persecution. We see this violence done to men and women in communities around our world because they belong to one group or another, because of their social class, because of their biological makeup, because of their conviction. Persecution is all too real. 
And Paul continues with famine, with nakedness, with peril, and the sword. All of these forces that separate us. But Paul has good news. These forces of separation don't have the last word. Nothing can separate us from God. What a powerful statement here. Not that a few things can separate us, or sometimes or some places could separate us. No, Paul says nothing, nothing can separate us. Not our inability to pray. For we read here at the beginning of our passage that when we laugh, what are you doing? Why don't you act? It can be hard to understand. As though God is uninterested. Such questions here. By no means is God distant. By no means has God forgotten. By no means is God absent. Nothing can separate us from God. The suffering, the pain we see in our world is in part caused by sin and brokenness in God's creation. Sin is that pervasive power that works to separate, to destroy the creatures and creation God has made. It is an active reality in our world and in our lives. But that sin, that brokenness doesn't have the last word. God already has the victory through Jesus Christ. And so when we wonder, where are you, God? Why haven't you acted? Why aren't you doing something? Why do we feel separated from you? We are reminded here that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so as we look around at the brokenness in our world, When we even feel lost or broken ourselves, we can live in the assurance that nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. As followers of Jesus, we are called to live out that promise, that our lives are a witness that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And it is our call to live that out and to demonstrate that to others who maybe are wondering, why is this going on? How can I respond to this diagnosis I wasn't expecting? Our world seems to be falling apart with COVID-19. What are we to do? Where do we find hope? Where do we find purpose? As followers of Jesus Christ, Paul gives us the words here that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And it is our calling to name and to walk in that assurance and to walk with others who maybe are wondering, where is God? Where is hope? Not in a condescending way that we have all the answers, but rather to walk with them and to assure them that God is walking with them also. That we are called to reach out beyond the walls of our church to our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends, maybe even our family members to bring the hope we have in Jesus Christ. We don't have to have the right words The Spirit intercedes for us. Instead, we are called to demonstrate God's unconditional love for us. That we are more than conquerors through Christ. And that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for your assurance that nothing can separate us. From your love. In the midst of brokenness, in the midst of challenging times, in the midst of hardships, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, the sword, we are assured that nothing can separate us from you, O God. And so we pray that our lives might be a reflection of that assurance that you are our rock and our redeemer. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite you to stand for our next hymn, O Love That Will Not Let Me Go, number 480. O love that will not let me go, Shouldn't 
cups that float may richer, fuller be. O light that followest my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart restores its borrowed ray that in thy sunshine plays its day may brighter joy that seeketh me through pain. I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain that more shall tearless be. O cross that lifted up my head, I dare to fly from thee. I lay in dust thy glory dead, and from the ground here blossom red, real life that endless be. We are reminded that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. When we surrender our lives and our being to Christ, we are united into God's family. A relationship with Jesus demands our faithfulness in all the areas of our lives, including our relationship with our money. Your regular intentional giving is vital to the mission and ministry of this congregation. Your giving not only keeps the building running, pays salaries, but also makes us a witness for Jesus Christ in our community and throughout our world. And so I thank you for your regular and intentional giving. You are invited to offer your gifts this morning on your way out of the sanctuary at the conclusion of our worship in the box at the table as you, work, as you exit the sanctuary. We will now join in our doxology. <laughs> you join me in our offertory prayer. The gift of your kingdom is precious to us, O God. It is worth our greatest efforts and our caring sacrifice. As we search for the best in life, we also want to share our faith with our friends and neighbors. We do that personally and with our giving. May our lives proclaim to all that nothing can separate us from your love. We give you thanks that you have entrusted to us all that we are. Amen. Our closing hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy are my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. I have ceased from my wandering and going astray, since Jesus came into my heart. And my sin, which were many, are all washed away, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus 
came into my heart. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure, since Jesus came into my heart. And no dark clouds of doubt, now my pathway obscure, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley of death now for me, since Jesus came into my heart. And the gates of the city beyond I can see, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, Floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as wanderer I go. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart As our time of worship draws to a close this morning, you will find some updates in your messenger as far as announcements. As we continue to navigate the world of COVID-19, we'll continue to RSVP for both our 8 o'clock and here at the 10 o'clock service for in-person worship, and we'll continue to live stream this 10 o'clock service uh, via YouTube and through our website. Uh, also, a reminder, Friday is my Sabbath day off, and so I'm not in the office on Fridays. As you exit the sanctuary, a reminder, too, you can drop your offering in the box at the table at the back. We also ask that you take your bulletin and anything else that you might have with you uh, so that we have less uh, cleanup here in the sanctuary. Here are now these words of benediction. Let us go as those who have the assurance that nothing can separate us from the love of God. No hardship, no distress, no peril, that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Go with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.